when was the last time you saw her? I saw her Sunday just before I went to work. Because I had to be to work at 3.30. And she had left a little before I went to work. And I haven't seen or heard from her since then. Where was she headed? Do you know anything about where she was going or... No, but later I heard that um, one of her friends, she was supposed to go to over one of her friends' house later on that day, around 3.30, and she said she never, she never came, I never called. April 30th marked the grim anniversary of Keir Johnson and her infant daughter Chloe's disappearance. Hampton police said Keir and her baby girl were supposed to meet up with friends at Buckrow Beach in 2017, but they never did. A quick trip to the beach has been the center of two missing person cases in Virginia. It's been six years since the family and friends of 34-year-old Kira Johnson have seen her or her eight-month-old daughter, Chloe Johnson. There aren't many details available about the case since the investigation is still very much active. Today, we are sharing what we know about the missing mother and how a family is desperately asking for help. If, if she's watching tonight at five o'clock, what, what, what do you want to say to her? I want her to, I want to say, come home. I'm looking for you and I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you get here. I'm going to wait for it to come home. <laughs> oh, mommy. <laughs> I miss my baby. I want her to come home now. Right now. So if anybody knows where she is or anything, call the police so they can bring her home for me. That's what I want. Right now. Anything else you want to say? I love her. I miss her. I want to come home right now. That's what I want. That's what I want her to know. And she know that anyway, so... But I want her here with me so I can know that they're safe. I need her. She's my heart, my life, and I need her. Kira Johnson is from Virginia and is described as loving, nurturing, and kind. Kira is all about family. She is a twin. The two are close. They would normally speak every day, usually multiple times a day. Reports didn't go into detail about any romantic relationship in Kira's life. It only shared that Kira and Carlos Jr. welcomed a baby girl named Chloe Johnson in 2016. But sadly, just eight months after little Chloe's birth, the mother-daughter pair completely vanished out of nowhere. On April 30, 2017, Kira told her mother that she and her eighth-month-old daughter would be going to Buckrow Beach for the day. She had taken a week off from work and the two had planned to meet up with friends. The pair left their house in Hampton, Virginia, but the two never arrived for the meeting with Kira's friends, and neither of them has been heard from again. When the pair failed to return home by nightfall, her family and friends began to worry. When they were unable to reach her, Kira's mother reported her and baby Chloe as missing. Today marks six years since a local mom and her infant daughter went missing. News 3 reporter Penny Kamin gives us an update on the ongoing investigation. I can't imagine what this family has endured for six years of not knowing. And we're talking about two people that are missing, not just one. April 30th, 2023 marks six years since Keir and Chloe Johnson went missing. On that day in 2017, police say the mother-daughter duo were supposed to meet friends at Buckrow Beach but never did. Initially, an Amber Alert was not issued right away because Kira had taken off from work and authorities did not believe the pair were abducted. It took 11 days after they vanished on May 11, 2017 for Hampton Police to issue an Amber Alert. Just three days after authorities issued the alerts, her car was located and found at a trailer park. Over a week later on May 11, 2017, police finally issue an Amber Alert. Derricka Wilson with the Black and Missing Foundation says that delay could be the reason the pair is still missing today. As soon as the Amber Alert released, the mother's car was found. If things would have moved a lot quicker, I think that the result could possibly be different. Not long after, her mother came out to share more details in the conversation she had with her daughter before she went missing. When was the last time you saw her? 
I saw it Sunday just before I went to work because I had to be to work at 3.30 and she had left a little before I went to work and I haven't seen or heard from her since then. Where was she headed? Do you know anything about where she was going or? No, but later I heard that um, one of her friends, she was supposed to go to over on one of her friend's house later on that day around 3.30 and she said she never, she never came, I never called. What's your concern right now? I mean, talk about, as a mom, what is this like? Well, it's painful because I, I, she never did this before. She always kept in touch with me, always been able to c contact her. And she never just went and never called or anything like that. And it's, it's bothered me because it's been a long time. And I, this never happened before. And she got my grandbaby with her. And I need to know where they are. And I want somebody to help me find them. She's 34. 4-11, her, her daughter's eight months, and um, I want her to come home. If anybody's seen my baby, please bring her home. Her name is Kier Johnson, and we live in Hampton. I know she has a lot of friends, a lot of people know her. She's driving a black Kier. Um, can't even think of the name of the car. Tell me, tell me about her a little bit. What is she like? Well, she's kind of a uh, private person. Most of the time, me and her be together. When I'm off, we spend a lot of time together, but mostly she like to be with her baby. She like to take walks on the beach and stuff like that. And sometimes she go to Marugo to eat. Well, you know, she don't go out like to clubs and things like that. She don't do anything like that. She's, so, she's just like a stay-at-home mom. She just work and come home, because sometimes she works six days a week. So this is... Out of the, is it, you guys usually talk every day or? Every day, all day. <laughs> we be in each other's bed with the baby. You know, it's, that's my heart. That's my baby, she's a twin. She's the youngest of my twins. I have four kids and she's the youngest, my youngest child. I can't imagine what this is like yes. for you. And can you take me what, I mean, every second must feel like an hour. Well, it's, it's and the point is, is it's hard not knowing where she at, cause I'm scared she is. Um, I think somebody. I, I'm scared she might be hurt or something, and she need me, and I can't find. Her. And I know she need me, cause she always do. She, she always depend on me. She always call. She called me mommy. Now she's my baby. Would she have any reason to just uh, to take off and not want to be found? No, 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 never, never. Just something that we always, if we had a problem or anything, we always talk. My kids always come to me and talk. We always do that. We never had a blowout or anything like that. We're very close knit family. And um, I just need her to get here. And if anybody see her, please call you guys and police someone to let me know or let them know where she's at so we can bring them home. If, if she's watching tonight at 5 o'clock, what, what, what do you want to say to her? I want her to, I want to say, come home, I'm looking for you and I'm waiting for you. Wait for you get here. I'm going to wait for it to come home. <laughs> oh, mommy. <laughs> I miss my baby. I want her to come home now. Right now. So if anybody knows where she is or anything, call the police so they can bring her home for me. That's what I want. Right now. Anything else you want to say? I love her. I miss her. I want to come on right now. That's what I want. That's what I want her to know. And she know that anyway. So, But I want her here with me. So I can know that they're safe. I need her. She's my heart. My life. And I need her. According to the Newport News Police Department, they logged over 5,000 hours on this case and are working with the federal investigators to locate Kira and Chloe. Thank you all for being here, and most importantly, I want to recognize the family for being here. We've been talking for the last little bit, and my heart just goes out, and the, the hearts of this whole organization goes out to the family. I can't think of a more difficult time to be going through uh, a situation like this than coming up on Mother's Day. And here we've got two generations here represented and two generations that are missing. Uh, and we're going to remain vigilant until we find out what is going on with the two missing. As many of you already know, on April 30th, uh, 2017, Kier and Chloe Johnson were last seen by family members 
uh, at their home located in the 1900 block of Hastings Drive. Kier had plans uh, for her baby, Chloe, to go to Buck Road Beach that day. However, they have not been seen uh, since that particular time. Uh, Kier is known to operate a 2013 black four-door Kia Optima bearing Virginia license plate VAW2197. Kier is described as a 34-year-old uh, black female, 4 foot 11, uh, uh, weighing approximately 140 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Uh, Kier also wears prescription glasses and was last known to be wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, Chloe's an eight month old baby girl, beautiful baby girl, approximately two feet, five inches tall, and weighing approximately 20 pounds and has black hair. Uh, on May 1st, 2017, a missing persons report was filed with Hampton Police Division, and uh, that information was immediately entered into the missing persons database on both the state and the federal levels. Uh, the case was immediately assigned to detectives, and because of uh, a number of factors. We were very concerned from the very beginning about this situation. Uh, Kiera is a very responsible young lady who works, uh, has got very close family ties, and is very close to her family. And as a result, uh, we have taken this case extremely seriously uh, since since day one. On May second, uh, we began uh, going public and trying to uh, get the media involved. And I want to thank the media. Uh, for their participation uh, in getting the word out. Uh, we have put flyers out and released all that information to include uh, our social media platforms. Uh, and through those social media platforms and, your, and with your assistance, and I know you've done a lot of linking and things associated with that, we've been able to reach out over a million people uh, in regards to this case. Uh, we have worked with the Regional Crime Line We've worked with Adams Outdoor Advertising to, uh, and to getting electronic billboards to display information about Kiera's and uh, Chloe's disappearance, as well as last night partnering with the Virginia State Police to issue an Amber Alert. Uh, I'm proud of the dedicated and spirited and uh, exhaustive time that uh, it's been shown by the members of the Hampton Police Division, the Newport News Police Department, and our state and federal partners that have been going into this investigation. Uh, I also want to thank the faith-based community uh, as their genuine concern. They have offered prayers. They have also offered during Mother's Day this coming Sunday uh, to hand out flyers uh, to their congregations and also pray for the safe return of uh, both uh, Chloe and Kier. We should also thank all of the citizens that have continued to, uh, to submit countless tips that we have uh, obtained so far. We do follow up on each tip that we receive. There have been many questions in the media about the Amherst <coughs> alert and, uh, and in the community about why one wasn't issued earlier. You have to understand we're dealing with a missing persons case. The Amherst system is an abduction system. Uh, when we, the investigation through the diligence again and of both analytical, technical, uh, and just good old-fashioned police work came together. Uh, they were able to get to the threshold where we believe an abduction was involved in this case. Uh, and at that point, the minute that that occurred, that we tripped, uh, that tripped the Amber Alert system and we were able to get approval from the state to have that go out. Uh, that would not have occurred without the diligence of the investigations and the investigators and for them to be able to decipher and sometimes very complex information. Uh, we do know that uh, when Kiera and Chloe first uh, reported missing, there was uh, very little evidence to suggest that there was an abduction at all. It was missing. She'd taken a week off for vacation, but was going to stay local. Uh, the big thing, again, was that uh, she's just a family-oriented person and uh, stays close in with family. And when she didn't report in, that was really uh, got us working on the case diligently from the very beginning. Uh, there's been some questions in regards to the AMBER system is why it doesn't include suspect information. Uh, the uh, 
information that we're going on is limited. There's very little I can talk about the active investigation right now because uh, we do not want to harm the investigative process. Uh, the little information that we have and that we are building as we go forward is extraordinarily important for the detectives to be able to control that information and to be able to uh, deal with anyone who may come and have come in contact with them or to, uh, uh, to eliminate them as either possible witnesses or hoax witnesses or suspects or persons of interest. And so as a result, uh, uh, we're uh, not releasing any information of persons of interest uh, or suspects at this particular at this particular time. Uh, again, I have to say that the uh, the investigators have worked tirelessly interviewing family, friends, associates, neighbors, co-workers uh, to attempt to gain any information of anyone who has heard anything about uh, their whereabouts. Uh, again, we have uh, collaborated with state, local, and federal partners on this case. Uh, we do have uh, their assistance and their dedication uh, on the case as well. And uh, the one thing I can say, and I would like to conclude with, is that, uh, again, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, we've got a mother and a grandmother here, uh, and we've got a mother and a child missing. Uh, with the family here, I'd like to say that it would be, and, and I ask the community, uh, just outright, if you have seen anything, if you think you have seen this car, please keep a lookout for this car. Anything that you can do to help us get these two back to their family for Mother's Day, what a special ending that would be for this traumatic week. Uh, I can't say it any further than, or any more uh, heartfelt that this is just a terrible time for any parent or grandparent to go through. Uh, we hope and we pray for the best outcome possible and hopefully have them reunite, reunited on this Mother's Day. Uh, with that said, uh, we will be vigilant and we will not stop until we find out what has happened. And with that, I'll take a few questions. Can you say what changed this to a possible abduction? If you mentioned earlier that there wasn't much evidence to say that. Now, Let, let me talk a little bit in general terms. Uh, in an investigation, we use every resource at our hands. Some of that is uh, information we receive from individuals. And, and these are folks that may not even know that they know something. You're talking with them and it's a little piece of a puzzle. And then we look at, uh, and that may be coworkers, that may be friends, that may be family. Uh, we look at, uh, these days, we look at a lot of technology. You know, we look at social media. And we use every leverage that we can get. And because of all the different dynamics with technology these days, a lot of this is bits and pieces that have to come together and they have to be analyzed and they have to be looked at. And, uh, and then we have to you know, validate that information for, for truthfulness and accuracy. And so some of that just takes time, it's methodical. And this is one of those methodical cases. Uh, beyond that, uh, uh, we're using every resource, local, state, and federal, whether it's analytical, whether it's investigative, uh, or whether it's just the partners in the community that will just talk with us. And so it's a combination of those factors without getting into detail. Uh, part of it is technical, uh, part of it is technology, part of it is an analyzing that technology, and part of it is uh, uh, just good old fashioned police work and people talking to us. Chief, I'm not sure you answered the question. The question was, what changed? The information, the level of the investigation, uh, as we gathered that information, we're able to put that information together and pull it together in an in a understandable sense. That's what's changed. Do you believe they're now both in danger? I believe we would not have issued an Amber Alert if we didn't think they were in danger. So is it safe to say that there was just a bunch of different and, tips? And let me follow up on that as well. Uh, we have been very concerned for their safety since the minute they were reported. I mean, this is not an individual or a child that uh, has a history of running away or has a history of, uh, you know, just going off for a day and, and being by themselves or alone, even though they're an adult and can do that. Uh, this is someone who's very closely family-oriented, uh, who has family members they talk to multiple times a day, even though they live out of state. Uh, and when they break patterns like that, you take those things very seriously. And so I'm very concerned and have been as the whole team has been very concerned since that point.
Yes, ma'am. Is it safe to say that there's just been a bunch of tips and that's with all of that information, that's what's changed? I will say that there has been a there has been a combination of information received from individuals uh, and utilizing all the resources in our hand, technology and all, that have been able to be put pieced together by a very talented team uh, that has led us to get to the point of being able to uh, issue the Amber Alert. Um, is there anything else that people can keep an eye out for other than just a car? Well, the car and them. I mean, that's why we're coming to you repeatedly and asking for the car, the description, the tag number, uh, description of them. Uh, you'll notice the picture here today is a little different. It's got, it's got her prescription glasses. We ask you to utilize that. Um, and so uh, that's the big thing. Uh, you know, talking with each other, uh, you know, any tip that anyone gets, we're, we're willing to run it down and have been doing so. And we know we will get erroneous tips, but that's okay. Is there any more detail about where they might be? You know, how far afield they might have. We still, at this point, we're concentrating, although we're, we're, we're looking everywhere. We've got nationwide databases and, and all of that in place, but uh, we're still looking in the uh, Hampton Roads area. You know, obviously, it's been tough on the family and friends and you know, church, family and relatives. As a chief in the police department, how difficult has it been for you all these last several days? It's extraordinarily difficult for the, the investigators. They get very personal in this. Uh, they get to know details about the family, uh, what good people they are. They get to know the de details about uh, uh, Kier and uh, Chloe. And it becomes very, very personal, uh, which helps with their drive to, to find the facts and be the independent finders of the fact. Uh, they take it one day at a time one hour at a time, sometime one minute by minute. Uh, and I'm thankful for these officers and these detectives, whether they're Hampton or Newport News, FBI or state police, uh, thankful for them every day for what they do. Have you been able to talk to the child's father? Uh, we're not going to talk. Uh, we, we talk with the child's father uh, on an on a ongoing basis, uh, just like any other family member. I know you said you can't give suspect information, but is there a suspect? I'm not going to comment one way or the other. Yes, sir. Can you get the names of the family member present? Yes. The names of the families? This is uh, Kier and Chloe's uh, mother and grandmother. Her name is Rhonda Cruz, and I spelled R-H-O-N-D-A-C-R-E-W-S. She is a uh, first cousin and aunt. Her name is Stephanie, Stephanie. Cruz. Rogers. I'm sorry, Stephanie Rogers. This is Helen Cruz, and she is also a grandmother for uh, Kier. And they have been. I can't thank them enough. And when we were talking earlier, uh, they have just been outstanding. Uh, uh, what a supportive grandmother and mother and family. Uh, they have stood before the press before asking for your assistance and again I thank the press uh, for your uh, continual interest in this story. And we will keep you informed, we will continue to keep you updated as the days go on and we continue to ask for your assistance and keep these pictures in the, of the, both the vehicle and uh, the missing uh, in the media eye uh, until we can make some progress on this case. And we'll keep you informed. So thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out. Um, at this time, that's going to conclude the press conference. Uh, afterwards, I will make sure you all have a script to uh, go off of. And she wants to say something. Hello, everybody. I would like to thank everybody for their help. And I would like to appreciate a lot if uh, you all could bring my kids home. <laughs> because I really want them home and I want them back. <laughs> so anything you all can do, uh, help me in any way, please do. Okay. Thank you.
many community members asked about Chloe's father, Carlos Johnson. Chloe's father was interviewed via phone on a local news channel and he stated he loved his baby and hoped she came home safely. He said he last seen her on April 29th, 2017 and he did not wish to speculate on what had become of the pair and has not been named as a person of interest in the case. Kira's twin sister who was deployed at the time of the pair's disappearance demands answer for their mother and family. Tierra believes it was someone her sister knew involved in their disappearance. Somebody she trusted did something to her. That's what I think. The Newport News Police Foundation put up a $25,000 reward in hope that someone will come forward with information. Smithfield Foods, where Kira worked, also added $10,000 last January. At this time, no further details were given on this case. And if you have any information, please contact your local authorities. Family, friends, and loved ones of the two are hoping that someone somewhere will say something. The community is still shocked. I can't believe that there's nothing, no, no information whatsoever, nothing. But they want the family to know they're not giving up and they'll always stand behind them. I just want her to know that the community, we are wishing and hoping for her to come home. God knows where they are and, and uh, never give up hope. And I may not know them personally, but I am yet still praying for them because I know there's still hope. Turn, tune into God and, and, and trust Him for the answers and don't give up hope. The community definitely has enough God. And everybody I've talked to is behind the family and they're all looking out, hoping that this story will end happily. Imagine if this was your child. Imagine if this was your mother. You would want someone to look for your loved ones, and we cannot give up on this family. Wilson is urging Newport News police, who have now taken over the case, to release an updated rendering of Chloe Johnson's appearance. Her features has changed. I mean, it's been six years, so she's six years older. And to bring in additional resources. It's now been years since there's been any developments in this investigation. What do you guys make of that? Well, I think again, um, we probably need to get another fresh set of eyes on this case. And we have seen cases that have gone many years that have now been solved because of a new detective being assigned to the case.